coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Bearhawk introduces 6th place Bearhawk 5. Virgin Orbit confirms target date for first launch attempt. And Cessna Sky Courier takes its first flight. Happy Friday and welcome to the show. I'm Sophie Herlock. Bearhawk Aircraft announces largest Bearhawk model to date, the Bearhawk 5. The new aircraft is the first in the line of a Bearhawk aircraft to use a 300 horsepower engine, seating up to six occupants. The Bearhawk Model 5 made its first flight back on May 3rd and has flown more than five hours in testing, exhibiting excellent flight characteristics. Slightly wider and longer than the original four-place Bearhawk, the new design is powered by a spec-built Lycoming IO580 engine and a three-blade Hartzell 82-inch diameter carbon fiber trailblazer propeller completes the package. At a projected gross weight of 3,000 pounds, with utility category strength at full gross, the 1,512-pound empty weight of the Model 5 results in a plane expected to carry double its own weight. Cruise speeds of 160 miles an hour are also expected as 156 miles per hour true air speed at 3,500 feet and 24 squared or 72% power was seen during tests. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. Swift Fuels proudly introduces the Forever Avgas STC. One simple upfront purchase entitles the Forever STC certificate holder to receive all current and future Avgas STCs that the FAA issues to Swift Fuels. The best part? It's priced today at only $100, and the prepaid certificate never expires. Get your Forever Avgas STC today at swiftfuelsavgas.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. It's time for today's trip around the patch. The Demo-2 flight crew has reported to NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida to start final preparations for liftoff. NASA astronauts Robert Benkin and Douglas Hurley arrived at the launch and landing facility runway after departing earlier Wednesday from Ellington Field near the agency's Johnson Space Center in Houston. The astronauts will lift off at 4.33 p.m. next Wednesday aboard a SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft carried by a Falcon 9 rocket, the first launch of American astronauts from American soil to the International Space Station in nearly a decade. Although hurricane season doesn't officially start until June 1st, the Air Force Reserve Command's hurricane hunters departed on their first storm tasking of the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season to investigate an area for possible development into a tropical depression near the Bahamas. The 53rd Weather Reconnaissance Squadron is expected to fly into Invest 90L throughout the weekend to provide weather data by satellite communication to the National Hurricane Center in Miami to improve their computer models. Annie Glenn, widow of former NASA astronaut Senator John Glenn, passed away on Tuesday at the age of 100 due to coronavirus. Glenn was an advocate for people with communications disorders and became an adjunct professor in the speech pathology department at Ohio State University after overcoming her own severe stutter. On Glenn's passing, NASA stated she stood steadfastly by her husband as he took to space once again as the oldest person to orbit Earth even as she continued her own lifelong public service on behalf of children, the elderly and the disabled. She will be missed. Gulfstream Aerospace's G280 has set another city pair speed record. On February 16th, the aircraft departed Vermont's Burlington International Airport, arriving six hours and 10 minutes later with a steep approach landing at London City Airport. The 2,735 nautical mile transatlantic journey was completed at an average speed of Mach 0.83. The G280 has amassed 75 city pair records. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Affordable and economical, Pipistrol is proud to present the Alpha Trainer. Offering excellent fuel efficiency and a durable composite design, the Alpha Trainer can be operated from virtually anywhere. Whether you're a first-time aircraft owner, assembling a fleet, or running a flight school, 
the LightSport Alpha Trainer from Pipistrel is a dynamic option. Learn more about what the Pipistrel Alpha Trainer can do for you at pipistrel-usa.com. Well, hello, fellow flight instructor. You know, it's been over a month now since we all started working and studying from home, and we hope we'll all be able to get back in the cockpit soon. But until then, King Schools is offering an even better deal on our flight instructor refresher courses. Right now, you can get our FERC for only $93. Plus, you get our King Schools Aviation e-library free with your FERC purchase. Use the code HOME when you order. Virgin Orbit has released details on the first attempt to launch a payload into space from a cradle slung underneath a modified Boeing 747. The window for their launch demo mission starts on Sunday, May 24th, and extends through Monday, May 25th, with an opportunity to launch from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. each day. Their 747 carrier aircraft, Cosmic Girl, will take off from Mojave Air and Space Port, fly out over the Pacific Ocean, and release Launcher 1, a two-stage orbital rocket which will ignite its engine in mid-air for the first time. If all goes as planned with the ignition, and if Launcher 1 reaches an altitude of 50 miles, Virgin Orbit will have made history. This launch demo marks the apex of a five-year-long development program, during which hundreds of hot fires of their engines and rocket stages, two dozen test flights with carrier aircraft, and ground tests were conducted with the goal of opening up space for everyone. Textron's new twin utility turboprop, the Cessna Sky Courier, has taken its first flight. The milestone flight is a significant step towards entry into service and kicks off the important flight test program that validates the performance of the Cessna Sky Courier. The Cessna Sky Courier took off from the company's East Campus Beachfield Airport. During the two hour and 15 minute flight, the team tested the aircraft's performance, stability, and control, as well as its propulsion, environmental, flight controls, and avionics systems. The team said the Sky Courier is already displaying a high-level maturity in its flight, and they were impressed to see how stable the aircraft handled takeoff and landing. The prototype aircraft, along with five additional flight and ground test articles, will continue to expand on performance goals, focusing on testing flight controls and aerodynamics. And that wraps up this week, everyone. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. Head over to aero-news.net if you want to stay up to date on the latest aviation and aerospace news this weekend. I hope you have a fun and safe Memorial Day weekend. I'll see you all back here Wednesday.